Hey y'all, welcome to Leftover Donuts. Uh, this is a channel dedicated to fish with a PH. This is for fish nerds, fish novices, everyone in between, and I'm definitely one of those ones who's in between. Um, I'm an enthusiast, but not an expert. So please, for God's sake, do not come for me in the comments. Tonight I'm breaking down Alpharetta. They're running Alpharetta for Summer Tour 2023, their second stop after Huntsville. Uh, night one, set one, Kill Devil Falls. You know, I thought this was kind of like muscular, kind of standard jam, you know, not nothing out of the box, but uh, still really good and sort of on par with what Kill Devil Falls is supposed to do. Same kind of story with theme. This is a good song. Um, but this was kind of like also not very much out of the box. We get more of that kind of muscular action with no men in no man's land, some nice watery effects from Paige and Trey, and I was sort of beginning to think about the art for this tour and, you know, the fact that the, al the album art for the live fish platform, how all of them are like underwater and it's all sea creatures, and I, I wonder, I was wondering sort of, especially with this run in Alpharetta, if there was a conscious effort to kind of um, make it feel like it was underwater because I sensed that a lot with these three shows. Yeah, so when I say the watery effects, I feel like those are kind of showing up a lot and I don't know if that's just my confirmation bias or what that is. Um, but we got Axilla 2. We got more of that underwatery action in the outro to that. We got Tube, this uh, typically a funk jam, which in this case it modulated to major. It kind of became like a hosey jam. And then it went back to a bluesy thing, with more of that watery tray guitar and Paige's acoustic piano, giving it a kind of a classic feel. And then we got uh, Rogue or Rogue, depending on, you know, I guess what part of the country you're in or how you would like to pronounce it. You know, you can, can pronounce it however however you want to. You know, this this one um, off of uh, Story of the Ghost is uh, one of these ones like kind of in a similar camp to Foam and I think others, which works really well as kind of a standard predictable jam with a lot of basic instrumentation. And uh, in, in the case of this one, you know, this one was good and standard and fit the bill and did its job the way it was supposed to. And Trey, I think I uh, managed to incorporate that kind of signature lick from Taste, that lick, that kind of, um, I don't I don't know if you'd call it a lick or you'd call it a riff. I don't know if there's a difference there, but that, that riff or lick that closes out Taste to bring them back into that final climax of Taste, that is echoed here in Rogue. And I think I've also heard that a number of times. I've heard that quoted in uh, Week of Hog Groove. So... I don't know, something to look out for. Okay, then we got Undermined. Uh, this is kind of a traditional sort of minor bluesy number. Um, usually stays pretty pretty close to the ground while still being good. I think the kind of watery tray effects kind of feel right at home here with those kind of chicken shack licks, which he, uh, which I believe are even in the studio version is, is there's... There are um, some of those licks that are that are quoted straight from back at the Chicken Shack. Then to close out the first set of Night One, we got Prince Caspian. So this started out as kind of traditional uh, Caspian jam, which then sort of exploded into kind of the psych rock heaviness. And I sort of feel like the the influence or the cross pollinating, you know, musical artistic communication between Fish and King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is is becoming more apparent. I think that 2021 was like a lot of like it was more um groove oriented and more uh sort of exploring different a diversity of soundscapes. Whereas this tour so far at least with Alpharetta, seems like wall of sound, very heavy, very dense sound that isn't always like the most pristine, but is very like heavy and very psyche. And so I think that, they, that that's what they were kind of going with here. And I think that King Gizzard influence uh, kind of presents itself throughout these three shows, especially. Um, beginning set two, we had Ghost, another, you know, traditional and a muscular psych jam. This also, this one also modulates the major, which they seem to be doing pretty often. And uh, that aspect of it is getting uh, somewhat tiresome. Um, but Fishman in this one provided some nice up-tempo military style backdrop to kind of differentiate it. And then we got Ruby Waves. Uh, this was a long watery hose jam. At 11 minutes, around 11 minutes, it transitions to something more atonal and psych rocky with all sorts of noises. And then the, around that time also, there were some Soul Planet teases, which I thought was funny because Soul Planet and Ruby Waves are like two examples of some of their newer songs that have been 
that have led to like these really crazy lengthy epic jams specifically you know with alpine for ruby waves and then shoreline for soul planet then we got and flew away which is another new tray which i i quite like it I'm coming around on a lot of the Trey stuff. I'm beginning to think maybe I don't actually hate it. Maybe I just really like it. And, you know, maybe those are two sides of the same coin. This one is kind of like a proggy blues thing with like multiple acts. Uh, I don't necessarily see it being a jam vehicle, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. My friend, my friend, I was pretty excited to see one of these go so long. It's kind of a, it was kind of a psych rock with a more gradual build than Caspian, but you can still see that King Gizzard kind of cross pollination with the wall of sound. And you know, the song conceptually almost feels like it could come from the King Gizzard library. Now I feel like I'm missing a song here. So let me just check really quickly that I'm not missing anything from this night. Oh, I missed a first tube. Well, first tube was, first tube was good. First tube was, was good. Um, I have nothing much to say about that. Uh, you know, it's standard. So for the night one encore, we got, if I could, um, I think this is one of their best mid nineties ballads. Uh, you know, I listen to a lot of the studio stuff <sighs> before getting involved in their live stuff. And so I'm very used to hearing, uh, Alison Krauss come on in that second verse. And so, you know, one of these days, I think it would be cool to, if she just like kind of came out to sing, you know, her part it might be interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then uh, Possum, you know, this is just kind of a classic thing. They play it a lot and it almost always kind of sounds the same despite its unusual nature. But there is something comforting about hearing it again almost. What I've written here is almost like the beginning of spring. I guess if like the beginning of spring you were like a little bit annoyed. <laughs> okay, moving on to night two, uh, set one. Uh, we got a runaway gym. Uh, this classic tale of a lost pet gives way to a jam that goes bluesy and then dark uh, before segueing nicely back to Jim's original ending. Foam is next. Uh, nothing much new about this version, but the standard jam here is always one of their most enchanting chord progressions. And when Trey can sort of dexterously weave his solo across this complexity as he does here, I don't. I think it's like pretty much magical. I don't think it's anything less than that. We gotta set your soul free. Uh, this one went to some different places, including that kind of underwater psych stuff um, with some digital delay thrown in for good measure. Although I don't know if I have that right because I, you know, I am like a kind of a musician, but I'm not an expert in a lot of the sonic stuff. So I don't know for sure if that's digital delay. It just sounded like, it sounded like similar things that I've seen labeled as digital delay. So who knows? Comment and write a comment and tell me what you think think if you think that's digital delay if you think it's something else um fluffhead uh this was a rare mid-set placement for this you know epic song you know it was well played but it was kind of a standard version with no accoutrements accoutrements everything's right here we got a really interesting adventurous jam that modulated in and out of various modes guided kind of by the emotion of the thing and for me it kind of made it the highlight jam of the set Esther, you know, this is another standard like foam that never changes much, but you know, also like foam, it's kind of this intoxicating, beautifully written kind of both musically and lyrically, like just story and and, and the imagery. Um, the imagery personally reminds me, if you've ever uh, read the work of the Japanese manga artist Junji Ito, you kind of feel like, like you could see that, you could see him doing a manga based on the story that's told in this song. To close out set one of night two, we got Got Golgi, Golgi apparatus. I pronounce it Golgi, Trey pronounces it Golgi. Uh, you know, I don't know. But Lake Cavern, this is a fitting exclamation point to close out a set, but you know, it's something that is basically the same every time. So there you go. Um, beginning set two of night two, Rift. Uh, this is such an odd song. What is the genre exactly I have written here? Um, but, you know, I do think it really grows on you and the music of the thing is so, so such a strong imagination and ingenuity and the fact that it all kind of like gels together and becomes cohesive is like pretty impressive. And then after Rift, we got Tweezer, you know, sort of befitting the song's kind of central lyric, Step Into the Freezer. I think that this song is usually kind of a great barometer for detecting the band's various stylistic interests during a tour. You know, it doesn't always tell a story, but it's always interesting. And, you know, this one contains noodling, some underwater psych rock, some kind of metal inflected blues, and then some, you know, prototypical hose jamming, which I think we are seeing a lot 
of in this in this tour so far. Um, then we got a golden age. I love gold. Uh, this was kind of a brief brief golden age, if I remember correctly, and there was some you know some light hose on the back. And I, I just have to clarify, I do mean H O S E. Then we got I always wanted it this way. This is a weird song. It's less varied and potentially less interesting than the tweezer jam that came earlier in the set. But I do think it was more consistent and driven by an emotional force. And it also had some crazy kind of sonic experimentation right in the middle there. And we got kind of this rip chord. Uh, I think it was a rip chord back to back to tweezer. And it was abrupt, but I guess it kind of worked. And then to close out the second set of night two, we got a hairy hood. I, you know, when it started, I was like, oh, I wonder what a hairy hood kind of looks like in this age of sort of restless, noisy mood shifting. But you know, this one, like other recent ones, kind of starts off with a sort of a hosey jam, and then it kind of modulates to the bluesy, and then becomes a bit of a party jam, um, sort of almost in the vein of Set Your Soul Free, before going back to the sort of traditional hood ending. Um, all in all, very solid. Okay, uh, night two encore, Life Beyond the Dream. I have written here no comment, though it's grown on me a little bit over the years, so I guess I'll just leave it at that. Tweezer reprise, like as long as there's a tweezer, you're 99% likely you're going to get the reprise. And then kind of a surprise sort of button on the end of this. You're kind of expecting it to end with that tweezer part too, but it ends with a big black furry creatures, creature, creatures from Mars. And this was a very interesting choice for an encore closer. And it kind of harken, harken, excuse me, harken back to night one of Huntsville with those kind of weird encore choices. Night three. Sat one. A few I'm going to group together. I thought they were pretty standard. Um, Buried Alive, Wilson, and NICU. Uh, nothing much to say about those. Well played. Nothing nothing terrible, but nothing super remarkable. Then we got a bathtub gin, which was kind of this bluesy thing that kind of sped up tempo partway through, and then it got kind of reverb heavy and a little bit spacey. Gumbo uh, kind of continued that bathtub gin, kind of New Orleans kind of drunken piano tradition. And we got a limb by limb. This is kind of a traditionally like kind of the prototypical hose jam. It's almost always like like an example of that. Um, and you know, I thought it was done very competently. And then we got this fucking crazy song, which is called The Well. And it's a new tra it's another new tray tune. And it begins kind of light and stupid. And it reminded me, it made me think right away of Dave Matthews Band. And somebody later on on Reddit said it reminded them of the Dave Matthews Band song, Stay Wasting Time, which is very accurate. If you listen to that first part of that song back again, that that is exactly what it sounds like. You know, also a similar, uh, kind of a similar chord progression, but different tempo to Wolfman's Brother. But then it goes off the rails completely and it becomes this demonic hard rock thing that's like just completely deranged and, and unhinged. And uh, I think that, you know, this is one of those, this so perfectly sums up Fish as a band and the sort of the love-hate relationship you can have a fan can have with them because the, the first part of that song is so stupid and light and funny. And then by the time that it ends, you're like, Jesus Christ. So yeah, so that was a really, that was a big headline for the, of the night for me. A Mountains in the Mist, a nice come down to some contemplative simplicity. Then we got uh, Halfway to the Moon, which is edging back up the energy into split open and melt and you know this song is always a great laboratory for the band's kind of darkest weird impulses to the point nowadays that it would almost be strange if melt didn't go psychedelic atonal or kind of stumble in and out of time and i think this one does all three and as a you know a prototypically great version okay on to set two so we got a mics this one is at least this year so far and maybe even last year a little homogenous nowadays with some occasional variations but this one like many of the other recent ones sticks to that kind of muscular funk rock type one jam and then uh carini which modulated to the major again like a lot of these are doing uh, became kind of party playful with kind of a blues inflection. Uh, got some of that under the sea guitar, um, that, but this time it was higher on the fretboard before kind of going dark and reverby again, and with finishing a little bit in this kind of dark blues rock before unceremoniously ripcording back to Carini proper. But you know the chaos of the whole thing means it's that ripcord is not not the worst possible decision here. 
And then we got Weka Paw Groove, which uh, like its mic counterpart, uh, the song sees little variation these days. But even in its most basic version, I think it can be more interesting than mics because it is emotionally a little lighter and more ambiguous. This one, like most recent ones, is two parts party, one part hose, H-O-S-E. And then we got sand, more underwater groovy action as it modulates to major. I have written here sigh. And then it kind of gets grand and epic and dark spacey as Fishman's drumming grows stronger, it goes, uh, grows stranger and more fragmented. It goes back to major briefly and then for settling on some dark blues metal to close out and a return to sand proper. And then we got a Reba, a classic no frills Reba Jam to let the dust settle on a busy, noisy, psychedelic three-night stand. Right at the end, there's a tease of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, right before he breaks out of that, of that, um, like at the at the peak, near the peak of the jam, he's teasing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, and I don't know if he's doing it intentionally, but that is what it is. And then to close out uh, Night 3 proper, Alpharetta Run, we get more, and I'm not crazy about this song in and of itself as a song, but I think you need one of these raw, raw kind of tray positivity anthems to bring you back down to earth after the craziness of these prior three nights. And so then we get this encore, which is, which was wild, W-I-L-D-E, wild. We got Fisherman on guitar, which it corrected to, auto-corrected to Fisherman. So we got the Fisherman on guitar. And I, so I don't watch the stream. I only listen to the shows because I, I can't afford the streams. I thought maybe they had, I didn't know who was playing guitar. I thought they had maybe brought on Les Claypool because his guitar soloing kind of kind of sounded like Primus a little bit but you know it was it was him it was it was the fisherman then uh into hold your head up which is par for the course for these kinds of these kinds of moments and then to close out with a you enjoy myself which was the first Georgian yem in 20 years and it serves as a nice as a nice counterpart to the night one Huntsville yem you know whereas that one was kind of a good mic showcase this one's was sort of all tricks a kind of shred fest and you know with a nice solid vocal jam to close it out and that's it for these donuts i'll be back i'll be back for, for more donuts i'll be back with more donuts uh soon to talk about wilmington okay well i think it's wilmington but anyway thank you so much for watching and uh in, enjoy your donuts